In this course, you will learn the commonly used items that can be applied to the restoration of clock cases. Many of these items can be found in your local hardware store. We will not be using a lot of specialized or expensive woodworking tools or finishing equipment. Most of the restoration work taught in this course will use commonly available items uh, that you may already have in your home. The idea is trying to keep it as simple as possible so that the average person can perform restorative work with professional results. We can do almost all of these without specialized equipment and expensive tools since such tools and equipment did not exist at the time the clock cases were made. Only period finishing materials can be used that are historically accurate to repair or restore an antique clock case. There is a right way and many wrong ways of restoring. Here's our 150 year old original. So we need to examine this to see how we can get our new one to match in terms of finish. And I looked at many of my sample boards. Here's our original and here's our reproduction copy. Can you easily tell which one's which? This one is our copy, this one is our original. And we can... Here's another good example of a side that's been restored and this needs to be restored. In fact this restored side is so clear that you can see actually the the label or the brand of the light bulb reflecting right off the light bulb onto our finish here. So we need to work on this part next. Another project I've been working on is this old English clock case from probably late 1920s. And you can see like in here it's like black. And here's a black area in here. And it's kind of blackened through here. The reason why it's blackened through these areas and is because people have waxed this with furniture wax, like a colored wax, and it has accumulated all over this case. So whoever owned this before, over the last 80 some years, waxed it over and over like this with some kind of colored wax, and eventually this started to turn black in area. Here's our finished product. I left it the way it is. One coat did just fine. In fact, that coat is so fine, it's just a very thin, thin, uh, not even thinner than a hair, probably a tenth of a thickness of a hair. As you can see on this nice adamantine clock, we've got some metal hardware on here. And many clocks have these metal, uh, pieces of metal hardware or pieces of, let's say, flaked finish or a piece of adamantine that might be loose on the corner. Here's a finial from a Vienna regulator case. And you can see here where someone has used glue on the bottom to try to glue this finial onto the case. But finials are supposed to be a... Also, if you run your finger across it, you can feel some of the bumps and where it raises above the actual finish of the clock case, which means that... As you can see, our repair is complete now. I have placed a couple more and it's finished out this whole area here. Now I'll have to go back off camera and do these two areas to finish this entire repair area. One more time and make sure it's just right before we move on to the final step. There, that looks pretty good for the first application. We'll let that dry and we'll come back take a look at it. It is common on the back of wall clocks that you'll have a hanging plate like this in an area that's dug into the back of the case so that a nail can hold this on the wall. Black painted clocks like this Gilbert can be restored, cleaned, polished just like the adamantine finishes. And the finish that you see here is the original black finish. That was. I've already worked on the top and this is the type of results that you should receive when you do the procedures I'm going to show you. You can see the light source here, two light bulbs, even the label on the uh, light bulb right there you can see. And you can see my hand reflecting very well onto the surface. Surfaces on the other parts of the marble case to look just like this. And here's our view of the unfinished side. What you have before you here are three OG clock cases. And they're in various states of disrepair. This, what we need for the next step are two boards with approximately the same length as our strip. The reason why we need the thinner strips is because they're going to be, they need to be, as and our long. clamp is holding the loose veneer, we need to address a third area. And that's this here. We're going to have to put a patch of veneer in here, but as you see our lines are crooked and they're not straight. Here's an extreme close-up of our work. Can you see the seams? You wouldn't normally be examining it this close, and even examining it this close to the untrained eye, they would not even see any seams. Best wishes and see you next time.